we turn now to entertainment. A good lounge singer can be the perfect accompaniment to an evening cocktail. A bad lounge singer can make your head spin. Well, one country has cornered the market on lounge singing, and sometimes they're dangerously serious about their passion, as Clarissa Ward reports. Mama Mia. a bit around Asia and you start to notice some similarities in the hotel entertainment. Whether it's Shanghai or Seoul, Jakarta or Kuala Lumpur, the songs are always cheesy, the dance moves dodgy, the outfits skimpy, and the performers almost always are Filipino. Where are you from? 27-year-old Annalisa Ramorta at the West End in Beijing has been singing her way across Asia for years. India, uh, Malaysia, and then China, Shanghai here, um, Taiwan. The Philippines, it seems, is the world's leading supplier of lounge singers. And it's not exactly a surprise when you consider that singing is practically a national sport here. This is, after all, the homeland of the new lead singer of Journey, who was discovered on YouTube. Outside stores. Restaurants, it's at campaign rallies, and at karaoke bars. It can be folk or rock or pop, good or bad or just plain ugly. But someone here is always singing. I think that's because Filipinos really have this innate love to sing. Some might call it love, others obsession. That's why in the news they say, you know, people, some, if you keep on singing my way, there's some people who get killed. <laughs> That's right. Here in the Philippines, a string of karaoke bar killings has been blamed on butchered renditions of Sinatra's classic. I did it my way. For many aspiring stars, it all starts here. We've arrived at the Center for Pop here, which claims it can bring out the star in you. I'm seriously considering the Starborn Express package, which for 150 bucks seems like a bargain. Run by the self-titled Sir Butch Albaracin, the Center for Pop is the alma mater of stars like Cherise Pempenko, who wowed American audiences with her performance on Ellen. Center for Pop Music Philippines, aiming to bring out the star in anyone who dreams. Kids here start really young. How old were you when you started to sing? Three. They learn how to work those vocal cords and work the stage. <laughs> By the time they're tweens, they're certified belters. A team of experts coach them on the hottest dance moves and evaluate their performances. You look good, you sound good, but the thing is, I, do, I don't feel the excitement. I decided to take my lesson with the beginner's teacher, Coach Karen. Your mouth should be open as if you are about to bite an apple. It's like yawning. Like, you, like this? Like ah. Ah. That way. That's right. Ah. That's how I should be singing. Yes. There's a bit more to it than I first thought. We also teach students how to perform. Perform. Okay. okay on stage. So one of our lessons is how to move your hands. So, yes. So the hand gestures, for example, if, if you're singing uh, you, the word you, you, so you, you communicate by, uh, by using crazy, this, yeah, crazy that. for you. Oh, I like that one. But it is a lot of fun. Touch me once and you know it's true. You have a very good voice quality and uh, I think you, you could be Madonna someday. Wow. Thank you. <laughs>
Goodbye, ABC. <laughs> With feedback like that, it's no wonder the Center for Pop is so successful. There are 16 branches across the Philippines and plans to take it global. But does any other nation love to sing quite as much as the Philippines? I think it's um, God's, God's gift to us, like, you know, thankfully God gave, gave us a gift for singing. And at every age and every level of talent, it's a gift they're more than happy to share. For Nightline, I'm Clarissa Ward, Manila, the Philippines.